Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. In episode 421, Nicole Porter explains to us how expanding your business through social media is about being authentic, being visible and creating relationships. So I think a big part of it that um, people often don't think about is taking advantage of other people's audiences. So for instance, you and I might have similar audiences that don't know about each other, right? So if I want to show up to your audience, I'm going to comment on your content. And the same thing for you. If you comment on my content, my audience is going to see you. And the more visible you are, and then the more you're putting out, you know, your website content and leading people there, there more people are going to see it by using that strategy. And, and another thing that I think a lot of people don't think of is asking them to do that. Just saying, hey, if you if you want to learn more, click here. So many Talking with the experts. Hi, I'm Rose Davidson from Talking with the Experts. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Global Glamping Charities for their valued support. Global Glamping Charities, solving homelessness in all its forms. Reach out to them at globalglamping.org. Do you love your podcast and dislike the editing and uploading to the various platforms? Would you like to spend this time with your family and friends or work on your business? Podcast editing doesn't have to be a chore. Talking with the experts partners with podcasters who need help with audio and content editing. If you'd like to know more, contact me, Rose Davidson, using the link showing now or send me a private message. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. Today my guest is Nicole Porter. And she's going to be talking about expanding your business through social media. And doing that is about being authentic, maintaining visibility and creating relationships with your customers and your clients. Nicole has a fascinating story. She is a chocolatier, but she's turned digital marketer and she is the mum of three boys. She helps small businesses navigate the large and overwhelming world of social media by focusing on what is really important. She helps small businesses create connections, awareness for their brands and authentic conversations with their customers. But most importantly, she helps drive traffic to websites and bricks and mortar locations, which ultimately equals more sales. Nicole, after a few little hiccups, welcome to Talking with the Experts. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So tell me, how did why did you turn from chocolatey to a digital um, marketer? Well, that was quite a story. Um, I'll try to keep it succinct. I um, when I first so I have three sons, and when I first opened my chocolate shop, I just had my two year old. Um, he's fifteen now, but he was two at the time. Um, so I had a brick and mortar shop and I would market heavily on um, Facebook and Instagram and through email. Um, and then I had my second son and it was very hard to have a, sh- a brick and mortar shop. So I actually moved my chocolate making to my home kitchen um, and I would stand in my kitchen all day and make chocolate with my 
my kids and I really relied heavily on internet marketing. Um, I marketed on Reddit and even more heavily through Facebook and Instagram um, and email marketing. And um, then when I had my third son, it just became very overwhelming. It was way too labor intensive to hand dip chocolate one by one in my kitchen at that point. Um, and I was in a BNI at that time on uh, networking group and the mortgage broker in that group asked me, she said, can you come and teach me how to use Facebook? And I went to her office and she, uh, I wrote a whole plan for her and I taught her how to use Facebook. And then when I was leaving, she paid me and I thought, wait a minute, I have a degree in marketing. I know what I'm doing on, on these platforms. So at that point, the wheels started turning and I decided to make that shift from being a full-time chocolatier to opening my business full time. So I really took a deep dive into what was working on social media and learning the other platforms. Um, and so that's how that switch really came about. Mm, tell me how you came up with your business name. So my business is my local area. Um, so I live um, in the U.S. on uh, in Massachusetts on Cape Cod, uh, which looks like an arm. And um, there's a there's a wildlife refuge, Monomoy uh, Wildlife Refuge, and that. So that's how I uh, originally started thinking I was going to be a very local business because people know me in my area. Uh, and then my first client was in Canada, and my second client uh, was in Texas. So. I definitely didn't start local. I didn't stay local, but I kept the name. It's a conversation piece at this point. So it is. Yes. I, was, yeah. I thought it was a mix of, of two different sort of words put together, but thank you for clarifying. <laughs> now, yeah, why is it fun. important, um, Nicole, for businesses to create, you know, better content and, you know, connections through social media? Well, I think with, um, content, it's really important for folks to get to know you, right? So social media is very new. And it's very different than traditional forms of media, where it would be very polished, it would be, you know, only one short thing, like if you're doing a TV ad, a radio ad, you know, magazine, or print, newspaper, they're very static, they're very polished, and they're only really one thing. And then you get to social media and it's really very different, even from a website, because yes, you can put up blogs, but most people aren't really changing their websites very often. Whereas your social media is, is constantly changing and it's really a wonderful avenue for people to learn about you, to get to know you, to learn what you do. So putting out content is very important for that piece of it. And the other piece of that is creating connections. And that's the other thing that social media does that no other form of media really lets us do is speak with our customers in real time. And so we're really able to have a conversation and um, get to know one another differently than you would any other way. Um, so social media really has a lot of benefits that traditional media doesn't offer us. Hmm, it's very true. Um, a lot, I mean, I've made a lot of connections through social media, and it it's it's a lot better than email, I think, because um, you I mean you have a list, but it's hard to um, cold um email people. I think I, I mean to me, I think it's really rude, but that's just my my opinion. I don't, I don't think agree. That, yeah, I don't think that, um, you know, I don't like receiving um, emails from people that I've had no association with. And, you know, and I've, I've been getting a lot lately, you know, asking, can they put blogs on my website or, um, you know, can they do this for me or do that for me or whatever. And I think, you know, really, I didn't even give my email address. Where did the hell did you get it from? Yeah, exactly. I get a lot of that as well. A lot of requests for SEO and websites. Um, and, you know, I would rather work with somebody that I have a personal connection with. Um, and, and the other thing about email is it's, um, it's private. Nobody else can see that conversation. So, you know, even if it is, you know, not just a spam email, if somebody is emailing you and asking a question, other users don't have the benefit of seeing the answer to that. Whereas, if somebody asks that on a social media post, 
it's public, which can be a little bit uncomfortable for some people, but it really does have that added benefit of giving you that extra visibility because maybe somebody else has that same question and then you're able to provide that answer to a multitude of people and not just between that private conversation that you're having through emails. So there is that benefit to it as well that I think a lot of people don't always think think about. Mm. Yeah, social media is more than just social. It's, you know, I mean, you have to do a lot of business through there as well. Um, but having said that, making social connections and, uh, you know, getting people to follow you or you follow somebody else is a great way to build up a client base anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's really interesting because people, they're, you know, like I said before, they're really able to get to know you and see your work um, and see kind of a portfolio. Um, so it's, it's a nice way of people to kind of warm up to you before actually working with you. So they feel like they already know you when they follow you on social. If you put out enough content and you put out enough variety. I think that's why people like it so much and when and why it works so well because you're not just walking in coal. People feel like, okay, I've been following them for a while and you know, I trust them. I've seen what they do. I see what other people are saying about them. So, you know, now that I need that service, I'm going to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. How can we use social media better to drive traffic to our websites? So I think a big part of it that um, people often don't think about is taking advantage of other people's audiences. So for instance, you and I might have similar audiences that don't know about each other, right? So if I want to show up to your audience, I'm going to comment on your content. And the same thing for you. If you comment on my content, my audience is going to see you. And the more visible you are, and then the more you're putting out, you know, your website content and leading people there, there more people are going to see it by using that strategy. And, and another thing that I think a lot of people don't think of is asking them to do that. Just saying, hey, if you if you want to learn more, click here. So many people get so focused on adding value that they don't also sell, right? I, I see people in two buckets a lot of the time. They either give all value or all sales. And you really need to have a nice combination of the two of those things. You you need to you need to provide that value so people get to know you like I was just talking about earlier, but you also need to ask people to click and and go to your website. So when you can, you know, take advantage of somebody else's um, audience, you know, by commenting and showing up to their audience, and then ask them to uh, to click on something, you're going to have the best of both worlds. And and I don't mean go. I'm not going to go to your comments and put my link in there and say, hey please go <laughs> Rose's uh, audience, go click on my link. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about leading genuine feedback so that people get to know me and then go to my site. And then um, they, you know, will click after a few times of doing this. So you definitely don't want to go and, and link drop and, and sell in other people's comments. It's not what I mean by what I'm talking about at all. I definitely mean, you know, build that relationship, show up to their audience, Ask them to click. Yeah, it's um the great way to get unfriended really quickly. <laughs> yes, it yes, it is. Absolutely. And I would not blame anybody if I uh show up in your comments and start link dropping. That's um it's not gonna go anywhere good. <laughs> Absolutely, not a great great idea. Now tell me a little bit about um how a bricks and mortar business can um can utilize social media a lot better than what um, most people are currently doing at the moment. Um, I, I know on, a lot of online businesses obviously utilize social media quite heavily, but bricks and mortar ones, I don't think in my um, observations don't utilize this as well. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. And I think there are a few simple strategies that brick and mortar businesses can employ to really increase their following. 
Um, I actually think Facebook is a really great place for brick and mortar businesses. Um, And the reason I think that is because community groups, local community groups are very active um, and people in the local communities really hang out in those places and they talk to each other and they're, they're very in tune with what is happening in their communities. And they're so underutilized by brick and mortar businesses. I can't tell you how many I talk to that just, they don't use them and they don't, even think of it. Um, So I think that that is one of the number one things that they can do is show up in those groups. And again, we're not talking about selling in those groups. Um, So it kind of goes to my second point is I find that brick and mortar businesses can often become a community resource. Um, And so not necessarily just posting about their own products or services, but also posting about things that might be happening around them, championing, uh, championing, <laughs> not saying that word correctly, other businesses in their community um, that they might have a nice relationship with, um, posting about that type of thing, and then sharing that type of content in a community group where you're, you know, you're not saying come to my store and buy my stuff. You're saying, hey, isn't this great? This thing is happening. And um you know, you should go check it out. And this is a great community event or whatever it might be, or so-and-so is having a sale. Did you know that? Um, And again, it's consistency over time. If you keep showing up, people are going to start to follow you and see what you have and what you're putting out. And you'll definitely get more people walking through your door that way. Um, You know, we were able to keep a, a small restaurant that opened up right before the pandemic hit, um, we were able to keep him going just by using that strategy through Facebook groups. Um, and just even providing value at that time, we were talking about, okay, now we, we're open for takeout and now we have outdoor seating. And, you know, because the updates were happening so frequently and people wanted to know what was going on. Um, so we were able to stay in touch with the community by using those groups. Um, And I think they really are, they're so underutilized. And I really think that um, they're a huge benefit. Um, And I think if you can use those in conjunction, so if you do your Facebook content in conjunction with um, Instagram, if you have a highly visual product or service, it can work really nicely. Um, You know, if you use local hashtags, that's a huge one that people, they don't always think of. Um, You know, they'll put hashtag painting, hashtag painter. It's like, well, yeah, um, I'm in Massachusetts and you're in Australia and we could both use that hashtag and anybody in the world is going to get that. But if I put hashtag Cape Cod painter, it's going to get me a lot further. Um, so really using local hashtags and researching that and seeing what other people are using. So, you know, if nobody's using Cape Cod Painter, I don't want to use that. <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm using things that other people are using because heavily used hashtags are how people will find you. So you really, you might want one branded one, but you really don't want them to be unique. Um, I I had somebody that had that misconception uh, in one of my workshops one time. She said, I was trying to be unique with my hashtags. And I said, no, (laughs) no, you don't want to do that. Like, yes, you want some that are really high use and some that are kind of middle use and some that are uh, low use, but not no use. Slow and no use are two different things. Um, So you need to use some that are that people are actually using. But if you're a brick and mortar you want to make sure you're using those local ones because that's how people are going to find you. Um, so those, even just doing those three things, like that could be a huge difference for a brick and mortar business. Yeah. But talking about hashtags, how can we find out, you know, which ones are popular? Is there a list well, you, somewhere? Um, not that I know of. Um, <laughs> there are definitely services that you can use that you can pay for that will help. Um, but quite frankly, I just do my own research, um, especially on Facebook and Instagram, which I recommend for local businesses. Um, they'll tell you, like if you go onto, um, business suite and you're scheduling, or if you go to Instagram, it'll tell you how many times it's been used. So you can, you can do your own research. Yes. It 
takes a little bit more time. Um, but you can definitely do your own research and see how often those hashtags have been used. And they, they will tell you when you type that hashtag in how often it's been used. Um, another thing you can do is if you see somebody in your area or in your niche, uh, if you're, you know, if you're not a brick and mortar and you, you know, you're a, can work anywhere. Um, you know, if you want to do niche focused ones, if you see somebody using a hashtag, click on it and see how, um, see how often it's being used. Because if you click on a hashtag, it will tell you how, how many posts there are with that hashtag. Um, so you don't have to think of them all off the top of your head. Um, you can go to other people in your area or other people in your niche and say, okay, what are they using? And do some research from there and, and see what type of um, response you would get from those different ones and you know how often they're being used. And That's terrific advice. Yes. Um, I mean, I did know the answer to that, but I just <laughs> <laughs> not everybody knows no, no they're kind no. of a tricky thing for a lot of people honestly um again it's one of those it's a new thing um hashtags they're they're even social media is new comparatively to a lot of forms of media and hashtags are even newer so i always tell people like you don't feel bad if you don't know that like not a lot of people do um that's why you people like you and i exist it's <laughs> it what um Another question around hashtags, what is, how many is too many? Well, it really depends on the platform. Um, and I will say there's different schools of thought on this. Uh, but when I'm talking about um, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, I'm only going to use a few and I'm really going to use them strategically. So really high impact hashtags. So maybe three to four six, five or six on those platforms. Um, if I'm on Instagram, I use the full 30 that they give you. Um, I don't see a detriment to it. It helps. I've seen it help my clients get higher visibility. If I test it between using a bunch and then only using a few, um, I see a better result by using a bunch. Um, now I know there's different schools of thought on that. Uh, some folks say don't use that many on Instagram, but from my own experience, that, that's what I've seen is use as many as you can. And they give you 30 on, um, on Instagram. So I, I use as many as I can there and fewer on the other platforms. Mm, 30 is quite a lot really, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It, it looks like a big block. I'll um, generally, if I can put it in the comments, I'll do that depending on how I'm scheduling um, or I'll put it down below. Like I'll make a big space so it doesn't look like it's right in the caption. Um, and I also tend to keep a bank of them. So I don't always want to use the same ones over and over again, but I do keep um, a Google doc and I, for different clients, depending on their niche, um, we have different hashtags, but I pick and choose from there. So I don't have to type them all in every single time. I have a bank of yeah. hashtags and yeah, I definitely I suggest same. doing that because <laughs> <laughs> it's tedious. It's definitely tedious to yeah, put them I'll all out there. I'll copy and paste. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Nicole, where can people find you if they want to work with you or they want to learn more about your services? So I am very active on LinkedIn. So you could find me under Nicole Porter. Um, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook under Monomoy Social Media. And my website is monomoysocialmedia.com. M-O-N-O-M-O-Y. <laughs> very <laughs> phonetically spelled. Monomoy. Very good. And you have a service that you want that you are, are offering our um, the social media landing page. Um, the uh, my membership program is that the one you're talking about the oh, no, the social that, circle. It just says um, yeah, monomoy social media dot com slash the social circle landing page. Oh. So yes, my, um, my membership program, um, I'm really excited about it. It's a new service um, and it's for very small entrepreneurs that need some help with social media, but might not have the budget for somebody to come on and do it for them. Um, and so what we do with that program is we give them content and we give them captions. So you'll get graphics and captions 
for every single day of the month. Um, so it'll be post this caption with this graphic on, you know, February 1st and then throughout the whole month. Um, so you have your content already and done. So you just can copy and paste it. And then we also do group coaching with that as well. So every month you get an hour and a half of group coaching. You can come and pick my brain and just ask questions about you know, things that you might Google and get five different answers and you don't know which one to pick. That's a great question to come and ask in the group coaching program. And so we all learn from each other and uh, it's a really fun time. Excellent. Um, sounds really worthwhile for people who want to learn how to better their social media input. Nicole, it's been an absolute pleasure to learn from you today and to actually meet you. Um, thank you so much for joining me. What words of wisdom would you like to share with our audience today? Oh my goodness, there's so many to pick from. I would say be authentic, be yourself, don't overthink it too much, and plan ahead. Yeah, planning is really good. I'm already like um, planning for March to uh, my scheduling. So <laughs> awesome. Yay. <laughs> I'd love to hear that. Yes, yes don't post it. Anymore. Well, the, it, it takes a while to schedule it's not like and then you know you've got to make the graphics and that takes time and and so and, and articles if you want to write an article so yeah there's lots to do so yeah I try and plan at least um already scheduled a month ahead and then I'm planning for the next month so yeah it's just uh, that's a great strategy I love that get it all done in one in one hit <laughs> Nicole, thank you so much for being here today. It's been a pleasure and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Sounds great. Thank you so much for having me. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the experts.